Good evening and thanks for joining us. We begin tonight with the quest for a coronavirus vaccine. Human clinical trials are now underway here in Canada of a vaccine candidate developed by a Canadian company. Part of the race for a vaccine that's taking place in labs around the world. Quebec biopharmaceutical company Medicago began the first of three phases of clinical trials yesterday. The company says 180 healthy volunteers between the ages of 18 and 55 are taking part. It hopes to move to phase two and three by October. That will involve testing a wider field of volunteers. Today, Canada's Deputy Public Health Officer cautioned that early evidence suggests even those who have had COVID-19 may not be immune to it for long. You could get it again, the same way people keep catching colds. That's why a vaccine is vital. Uh, most scientists, uh, being very optimistic, might uh, think that if, it were, if there were to be a vaccine, it really wouldn't be before 2021. What's, uh, I think, also uh, important is that uh, we do these uh, trials properly. Never before has so much effort been concentrated on vaccine development. 23 potential candidates have now reached human clinical trials. Two front runners have moved into phase three and widespread human testing. In May, the National Research Council of Canada said it was collaborating with the Chinese firm CanSino on another potential vaccine. Human trials in Canada of that are delayed, though they have begun on Chinese military personnel. In the absence of a vaccine, the only effective way to break the chain of transmission is by keeping people physically distant. The U.S. is a grim case study in what happens when you reopen the economy too soon. It now has nearly 3.4 million confirmed cases of COVID-19 and more than 136,000 people are known to have died from it. And today, at least three states, North Carolina, Alabama and Florida, reported a record number of deaths in a single day. The worst may still be yet to come. The director of the Centers for Disease Control says he fears fall and winter will be, as he says, one of the most difficult times that Americans have experienced in public health. Jackson Prosco reports on the COVID-19 crisis still out of control. On the front lines of the pandemic, doctors across the U.S. are seeing something tragically predictable. Record numbers of hospitalizations and deaths. If one place in the United States is unsafe, then we're all unsafe from COVID-19. Dr. Vin Gupta is a lung specialist in Seattle. <laughs> he says while COVID-19 treatments have improved, a wave of new fatalities is now unavoidable after the rapid rise in cases in so many states. At some point, this increase in cases is going to result in an overwhelming amount of hospitalizations that will spill over into ICUs and people will needlessly die. There's only so much the system can take. And we know that even if you're young, you can end up in the ICU. At the same time, testing shortages have come roaring back. The system is so overwhelmed with demand, it's taking more than a week for many Americans to get their results. If testing delays are running a week plus, you're going to miss the window for possibly as many as two, diff two more generations of transmission before you get even the test results on that first generation. That means the virus is spreading undetected. In New York, there are fears of a resurgence in cases. The governor has expanded a mandatory quarantine order to cover anyone coming from 22 different states. We can't be in a situation where we have people coming from other states in the country bringing the virus. More and more states are eyeing a fresh shutdown as the only way to get the pandemic under control. They may reluctantly end indoor dining and close bars and gyms all over again. But even if they do it tomorrow, it will be too late to stop this surge. And tonight there are concerns about how that surge will be documented and monitored. The Trump administration is now ordering hospitals to bypass the Centers for Disease Control and send key information about hospital bed use and ventilator usage directly to a national database being kept in Washington. Donna, that is raising serious concerns about the data being politicized or even manipulated to downplay the severity of the crisis. Jackson Prosco in Washington, thanks. There are reports the U.S. and Canada have agreed to keep the border closed for at least another month. The border will stay shut to non-essential travel until at least August 21st. The border has been closed since March 21st, and its reopening has now been pushed back four times. Only essential workers, trade shipments, and those reuniting with immediate family members are allowed to cross. Recent polling suggests more than 80% of Canadians favour keeping the border restrictions in place. And Canada's public health officers agree.
Canadians have made uh, tremendous uh, sacrifices uh, to date in, in terms of flattening the curve, and we are we're seeing uh, the, the fruits of our labors, uh, to be quite honest. And I think uh, uh, we're very mindful that we don't want to, quote, waste those efforts by uh, uh, potentially, quote, reintroducing the virus into Canada and, and increasing uh, the risk of uh, further uh, transmissions. A couple from Florida has been charged after failing to self-isolate for 14 days after arriving in northern Ontario from the United States. Police say the couple arrived through the Fort Erie border crossing on July 3rd en route to a seasonal property. After failing a compliance check, they were charged under the Quarantine Act and both were fined $1,000. They're now being closely monitored by the local health unit. On the weekend, Florida shattered the U.S. record for the largest single-day increase in new cases of COVID-19 in any American state.